Hey all, this is Bogue here with Everything Board Games and I'm uh, uh, here today talking as part of the artist uh, series that we're putting together and today I'm honored and truly am and uh, privileged to be joined by Manny Tremblay with Roxley Games. How you doing sir? Hi, good. Good. Doing great. Awesome, man. Appreciate you coming on and uh, kind of sharing with the uh, the community uh, about uh, not only just where you guys are at right now in the in the world. I know there's a lot going on. I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us today, but um, really kind of break down a little bit about um, you know the artist styles and so forth, and kind of get a little background as to the the relevance, especially not for just people that are general gamers, but you know obviously we have a lot of designers or want to be designers, and uh, you know talk to them a little bit about the importance and how you kind of uh, work through that. Um, so I guess just to start off a little bit, can you kind of give me a, a, a background on uh, kind of your style, I guess is the best way to say it, somebody that, you know, can draw stick figures and isn't that way. Can you give me a little bit of uh, your, maybe some influences early on, your style and so forth? Um, yeah, that's an int- it's a fun question to reflect on. Yeah. Uh, I, was, I was pretty young. I mean, I was, I don't know, I, I think I, I would say I was 15 when I decided that comic book art was mm-hmm. something I loved. I did. I was introduced to an Uncanny X Men comic book. Oh wow! That was drawn by Jim Lee, and I flipped it open, and the second page was this two-page spread of Storm, and she was like across the whole page, and she was do- dodging lasers in space. And I really <laughs> need to find this comic book so I can have it uh, still. But I had it back then, and uh, I was like, "This is the coolest piece of art I've ever seen in my life." And it, it really informed a lot of my desires with art. And uh, so although my um, I've self-published some comic books, I never worked for Marvel or DC or whatever. And so uh, the art style I've kind of become more known for now, which I would call it the Dice Throne art look, uh, really was kind of born out of a desire to make like superhero-y comic book art, but I also love animation and anime. Uh, I've, I've sometimes heard people jokingly refer to it as like American anime. Okay. And so, because I do have a lot of influence and uh, a, a deep love of anime, Miyazaki, sure. um, and assorted movie, movies over there. But uh, so, yeah, I think that's probably a, a fair assessment is that it's heavily influenced by comic books and anime sure so i mean obviously the the kind of role into that obviously is having the opportunity to work uh, with marvel which is the most uh, oh yeah most current stuff must have been just amazing right i mean now you're talking about not just designing your own but working from some uh some try and true what was your uh and i know i've seen some other questions asked of this too so not to repeat it but kind of detailed when when you thought about that you know, in your mind from the artist side, how did you decide I want to work it? Do I want to change? I mean, I'm sure you had to stay within certain guidelines and approvals, right? But was there a way for you to be a little more creative on that or come up with it? Because it certainly can see your style in that, you know, yeah. in the artwork. I think uh, obviously working with Marvel, there are, I would say Marvel basically presents kind of a, I'll call it a, a field to play in, mm-hmm. right? they they don't give you a closet to play in they're like like here's this open area like experiment have fun do whatever you're going to do and obviously they have to approve everything send it to me to look at it (laughs) yeah 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 they you can't just do whatever you want but there are uh pre-existing style guides and obviously you're uh, as a person drawing it um i can't just take scarlet witch and give her a top hat to make her blonde and you know put her in a sunflower dress i mean I, you can't you can't <laughs> that do that would be pretty cool like it would be pretty cool <laughs> yeah. but if you know and partly that's because what do people want they want scarlet they want to when they see that image of scarlet witch they want to feel like this is scarlet witch mm-hmm. and especially in dice throne when you kind of embody the character you're playing right um you want people to feel like i'm playing as thor i'm scarlet witch and so there's a there's a little bit of a an inner argument that goes on inside the artist's brain of like okay i want to respect marvel and to respect the brand that we're working with but i also want to infuse it with as much of myself as i can and so i think there was a happy medium there reached where i feel really satisfied i look at the art like the little captain marvel box behind my head there you know i'm very happy with the end product absolutely Um, 
Yeah. And so and it was very satisfying. Fans, yeah. Some of the fans, I mean, you guys have been crushing it along as a fan by myself and had the whole shelf full section um, of it as well. It's, it's uh, wonderful stuff, man. Um, what is, you know, when you talk about uh, Marvel, I always kind of look at it and say, well, of course, you know, those are staples and so forth. But if there was like other licenses, and I know maybe you do have some working we can't speak of yet, but what is there, what other type of licenses would you be interested in, in pursuing? I mean, obviously the success of this is now just a platform, right? For you guys in the in mechanics and so forth. What would you be your chosen, uh, your license if you could do it? Um. I think it's interesting. It's an interesting question because it's, there's, I mean, there's countless licenses, Star Wars, Overwatch, League of Legends, Dota, uh, Avatar, Last Airbender. I mean, yeah. the list could go on and on. Naruto. Right. Uh, well, you have you him could, with a monk already, right? So right, right. <laughs> right. You know, you could, I mean, really, we could just keep going and going and going. Yeah. Um, and so I... I mean, honestly, making my own heroes, my own new stuff nice. is my first preference when it comes to making new Dice Throne characters. Mm -hmm. But could I see us playing more with other licenses? For sure. Right. And I think part of that will be decided by, I mean, obviously the Kickstarter was successful mm -hmm. for Marvel. Very much, very much and so. yeah, very successful. Mm -hmm. um, and the response to the characters has been really good. The testing has been great. The response to the art has been great. So you know, would we do more Marvel? Sure. Would we yeah. do other brands? Possibly. And I think that will, we kind of want to, I mean, we're, we're a small team. So I think what happens is we do one and while we're working on more stuff, like there have been heroes I've been working on for Dice Throne that have been, I drew the first piece of art five years ago mm -hmm. that we have not actually made heroes for yet. Right. And so some of those heroes may see light in the future. They may not. They may get buried forever. Um, so when we make the decision to move forward, we move on to the next specific game or product. And then we make that one. And as I think Nate and Gavin and I have been very specific when we say that anything we make is because we wanted to make it. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's always nice to be able to say, we made Marvel because we wanted to make it, not right. just we made Marvel because it's Marvel. Yeah. And, and you know, very quickly, um, especially amongst a lot of the folks in the communities that are uh, heavy Dice Throne players, I mean, you know, your characters in season one and season two are right up there with many of the Marvel characters now because they played them, seen them, and played them more. You know what I mean? So yep. um, as good as you. Now, I know, um, you know, as somebody, you talk about all these different characters to, that you could still work on that are unique to you. I mean, I actually do a part of that homebrew uh, group and so forth and love to just yep. throw it out there and use some of that. And you guys have been, by the way, amazing with that uh that separation between ip and you know accessibility and really to right. grow um grow the um uh community which is probably why it's grown so much because of that um that willingness to kind of you know um indulge in that creative side right by many yeah. folks now most of us are you know clip arts pulling it from someplace too because we don't have the, <laughs> we don't have yes. the free and creativity uh, you know uh, amongst yourself. Yeah. but um, as, as we go through that, I think the a good segue is you talk about the evolution, like starting something five years ago, right? So, uh, you know, we have a tremendous community on everything board games, and, we, and obviously folks are playing all the time um, in general uh, play sessions, but there are game designers or wannabe designers, right, that are out there that, you know, as everything talks about mechanics, well, you know, you can use this mechanic and this mechanic in the game to put these together and how great it is. But I'd really like to get, and part of this series is to get your thought on how the artistry of gaming, you know, the art plays a factor into that to the point to where, you know, you can have a, a work replacement. There's a lot of work replacement games, but mm -hmm. they're beautiful ones. There's ones that really do uh, connect with people. And a lot of that, I assume, is due to the art, or I know it is. Can you explain a little bit about that or your thought on that, that process? Um, I think theme is, I, I remember I was speaking with a publisher, I won't name names, mm -hmm. um, and I had said, I asked, they, they were working on a game that was a worker placement game. Uh, it was had area control in it, had worker placement stuff. And I said, so aren't there like a thousand worker placement games? Why, why are you making a new one? Why, why would you make another game where you place a worker and you gain a resource and then you control an area? And he said, that the truth is, is he's like, yeah, there obviously there's tons of them out there, but um, the theme is often what drives a person. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, it often mo- it motivates people. Like take Wingspan, for instance. Wingspan is a great game. Mm-hmm. Um, the theme, though, I would argue, and the visuals are what have sold a million copies. I don't believe that that game, if it had been themed a naval war game, <laughs> Right. And maybe it would have been super successful, but the right. fact that it appeals to even like my wife, who mm-hmm. she's not a gamer, she's not a Euro gamer, um, she doesn't know anything about engine building. Yeah. Um, but she looked at that art and she was heavily drawn in to the beauty of yeah. Beth's art. And I think when you are making any game, uh, when you and people can tell when you slap a theme onto a mechanic and it's it's often it often happens in kind of in reverse where you take a popular game like i'll say munchkin right munchkin's a very popular game mm-hmm. but you can slap any ip on that and no offense to steve jackson who i do not know at all mm-hmm. but uh, when you slap an ip onto it all you're doing is trying to get someone who likes batman to buy that game Mm -hmm. um it's not really a batman game it's not really a a marvel game but it's munchkin with a with a repainting with a re uh uh, shellacking Mm -hmm. and so i think artists and designers what we want the the holy grail is to find the optimal mechanic and the optimal game design and then to apply a theme that takes a player and sucks them into the game, into the immersion of it, into the feeling of the game. And I think, I mean, I obviously Dice Jones is my game, so I'm heavily biased, <laughs> but I believe that the theming and the characters and the style, even Marvel, it, it, all it does is accentuate the gameplay. It makes people feel more immersed, more involved. But there's a reason Barbarian doesn't have a name. Mm-hmm. There's a reason none of my the season one and season two characters have no names it's it's specifically because i want you to be the barbarian i want you to be the paladin you you're the pyro you're the thief you're the whatever um and so i think that that's that was a very conscious choice because they have names they all have names i I know and we (laughs) that stuff too and the uh the offshoots of uh, the conversations on the community and so forth as well. But when um, I guess, so the nice thing to think about when you talk about that, and if you go back and I recommend everybody check out, you know, uh, I know with your uh, Tumblr, you, a lot of stuff you have online, social media wise to take a look at what I saw um, in very specifically in the um, art world is an evolution, a set of evolution. So it's not like uh, you, as you said, you know, you started that one five years ago. It's not like all of a sudden you just sat down and, and, and designed all these, uh, great characters and so forth. So, you know, uh, I'll, un- you know, like Dice Throne, I know you have other uh, projects, your, your children's story books, right? I'm sure it's the same type of situation, right? They've been in projects or been in works. I mean, shoot, I know you showed the evolution of your shed, <laughs> right? <laughs> Going to, from beginning to end, everything's got the beginning and end, right? Um, well, on that note, the evolution piece uh, seems to be coming out of this uh, conversation well, but when you created, let's take the shed for a minute, is there a place to, to that's the right time or uh, you feel to start on a project like that? Like, do you need that uh, space, uh, like a shed to, to go and spend time and develop it? Or does it just come randomly, you know, all, at, at any place? How do you um, find? I, I remember someone telling me once that um, good ideas or projects they don't have, they don't just happen. What they do is they happen while you're in motion. So like if, if you're not in motion making something, then you can't have epiphanies. You can't have moments. Um, you know, the shed is a fun, fun example. Like I really wanted to build one. Mm-hmm. So I just, I decided I'm going to build one. And the truth is I did, I did not build that shed. You know, I helped finish it, but I didn't build it. But it's, it was a huge tangent, but uh, that shed, the day I decided I was going to, um, like the week, I guess, won't we'll, we'll be as specific to say the day, but the week I decided I wanted a shed, I went to McDonald's and I had gotten, actually, I went to Home Depot and I got a bunch of these pamphlets on like, like sheds for the backyard, different sizes, different scopes, sigales, all this stuff. And I was like, all right, I'm going to buy one of these and I'm going to pour my own slab and I'm going to, I'm going to rebuild the whole, I'm going to wire it. I don't know how to wire anything. (laughs) And so I'm like, all right, so I'm going to, I'm going to totally do this. I'm sitting there. I've got my 32 ounce Coke. 
I'm eating my Big Mac. And this one of my friends walks up with his business partner. They worked in construction. And they walked up and they were, they looked, hey, how you doing? They sit down and we start chatting. And the guy, um, my friend's boss, is like, what are you doing? I'm like, well, I want to build a shed in my backyard. I want to build a studio that I can work in. He was like, oh, don't use those. No, don't use those. I could build something in your backyard that would be cheaper and better than what you're buying. And I'm like, well, I mean, I guess let's talk. Let's figure out what we need to do then. <laughs> And he's like, that sounds great. So had I not had the idea, had I not gone to Home Depot, had I not then went to McDonald's, a place I went to all the time to draw, right. and happened to sit there at that moment to be in the way of a person who just happens to come up and wants to help, yeah. right? And so stories, games, art, all this stuff, you need to be in motion. And it doesn't mean everything you're doing in motion will actually yield fruit, because I have tried to publish comic books for 25 years, 30 years. Mm -hmm. And I only started actually publishing them when I got off my butt one day and said, well, I'm just going to start writing stories. I guess I don't care. I mean, I may, they may get published. They may not. Um, I've made very little money off comic books, but I've, I've published 10 of my own graphic novels now. And I only, I mean, they're not, I don't, I wouldn't consider them great, but I would say that I made them. Yeah, And I think making them is, is the first step towards something getting found, yeah. something getting you being in the right place, the right time, that kind of thing. And it's always about that, right? The, the left brain, right brain, the creative side, I mean, creating something from nothing is beautiful yeah. and no matter what it is. Right. Um, and that's, that's awesome. Uh, you know, I, here's a, a question for you that I, I don't believe is existential. I actually think it's quite real, but I want to get your thought and take on the fact and uh, context wise Let's take um, uh, uh, Da Vinci, okay? Da Vinci and all his work, Mona Lisa and everything, you know, there was only 25 million people on this planet at that time, right? <laughs> seeing does. his work and seeing his artwork. You, right? I can say, I don't know, 25 million to have they seen your, your artwork. You know, I, think about yeah. it. <laughs> think about the, 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 right? What's your thought yeah. on that, that context? I, you know, it's funny. I think because... Because I'm the person making it, and so therefore my world is, my, all of our worlds are very small, right? My world is tiny. So when I make something, it's a big deal to me. It's a big deal to my children. It's a big deal to my wife. It's a big deal to the coworkers I work with. It's a big deal to the, it starts to become less of a big deal, but it's still a big deal to the Dice Room community mm -hmm. or to my, the people I know on Facebook. And then as you go out, right, as you go out further and further, it dissipates into the 8 billion people that are on the planet. Right. And so is it, you know, are there more people that have seen my work than Da Vinci's? Well, maybe, but you know, will more people remember Da Vinci when I'm dead? Probably. <laughs> hey man, you're working at it. It's awesome. It's good stuff. You know, you know, but I, I do think it's important. I think for any creative to realize that, and honestly, I wrestle with this all the time. The existential aspect of creating anything um, is, you know, why am I doing it? What's the point of it? Obviously, we live in a commercial world where people got to pay bills. So there's money involved in part of that decision making process. But I think on top of that as well, the, the I desire to create something for people to experience. Right. Um, a lot, all my books are that way. Even Dice Throne, it's really, it was built on this idea that people would come together to play and to spend time together so yeah that's awesome man well um you know it, i guess is there any other projects that um you know that uh, take a moment here whether it's games or anything that you have going on that uh you know as folks uh, see this um and you know obviously you've, uh, follow you and have been following you is there anything that's coming out that uh, you'd like to speak of or discuss um i mean i have multiple games that i am developing mm -hmm. independently Awesome. Um, I, uh, I, I mean, Wonderland's War is a game that is should be arriving. We're supposed to be getting U.S. fulfillment, I think, in March nice. for that. Nice. And that's probably um, artistically, that's probably one of the games that was most in my wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. Like if if I if I reflect over all my independent all my independent books that I produced, the Wonderland's War was kind of like a sweet spot for like kids fantasy and a slight 
a little bit of darkness to it, but not enough to scare people away. Um, and also, it's a game that I think is really cool. I think it's a really interesting game. Awesome. Uh, outside of that, um, unf- I don't know what will happen to it, but I, I got a game picked up by a publisher that my son co-designed with me. Wow. That's and cool. I don't know if it'll ever see the light of day. It may not. Um, it happens that sometimes games get picked up and they never actually get made. Right. Um, sure. But he he and I co-created a game. I did the art. And so we'll we'll see. Yeah. And if, the, if it doesn't go there, um, maybe I'll get it back and I'll get to do something with it. Well, it's interesting because you talk about just getting it out there, just producing it, right? I mean, to me, the value of having two boys myself, I mean, doing something like that's got to be very rewarding Mm -hmm. right it is fulfilling whether it makes a dime or not or sees life sees the table man that's all that matters right yes fantastic well i only got one other question that's are you going to get involved in this nft thing in the future and if so i want in i want to buy one (laughs) (laughs) no i i am uh i I will i will say that i am not a fan not a fan of (laughs) nfts uh i i did i did look into it i started looking into it and I have seen a lot of artists express a lot of opinions on it. And... I bet. Yeah, that's what curious. I thought I'd throw it out there. That, that bomb. Yeah, yeah. It and drop it. See what happens. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Well, Manny, thank you, man, very much for your time and uh, jumping on and sharing some uh, some moments and some background on the, on the questions with the community. And uh, folks, make yeah. sure, as always, if you haven't uh, picked up uh, the game Dice Throne or Dice Throne Adventures, which I highly recommend. I think I'm playing that more now than ever before. Uh, make sure you do. It's some uh, fascinating game. The mechanics are great, but the art's even better. And so uh, thanks. thanks again, sir, for joining us. We appreciate your time. No problem. Thanks.